What up guys, welcome back to the garage, man. Today we're gonna be covering my zinc coating setup. Well, and, and setting it up. I haven't even got a chance to use it yet. I wanna interrupt this video really quick to give you guys a disclaimer. This video is mainly me putting together my zinc coating setup. This is my introductory to it. I've never done it before. This is my first time doing it. And no, in this video, I do not get the results that I am looking for. So I wanna let you know that early on, if you are watching this video because you are wanting to get into zinc coating yourself, there is some very good information in here for you, but I have not perfected my process <laughs> so if you find yourself on this video and it has been posted up for some time and it's an older video when I do perfect my process I will put the link to the newer video that's gonna be in the future in the description down below all right now back to it so these are all the things that I have purchased so far. There are gonna be some upgradable things in this setup. This honestly is as budget as you can get, man. You need a constant current power supply. I got an electric single burner. So this is basically like a little miniature stove. We're gonna go over what all this stuff is for as we are actually setting this all up. And then this is a fish tank warmer so basically you buy one of these to put into your fish tank to warm the water of your fish tank or whatever liquid it is that you have this thing submerged into so this is a very budget friendly type of thing i think this thing was like eight dollars on amazon some of these submerged heaters that some people use are upwards of like 120 150 dollars a piece but i learned that you are capable of using this is it going to work as good probably not but you know what we're going to make it we're going to get by with it the fish tank bubble in which just so you know if you get one of these from Walmart because that's where I got this it does not come with freaking tubing I actually ordered this on the app and it got dropped off to the house I opened it up and I figured it would have came with at least like two feet of tube but no make sure not to forget the tube and then from there I have some Epsom salt uh, murotic acid white vinegar uh, distilled water and this right here is yellow chromate this is probably going to be the hardest thing to get your hands on I actually had to order that directly directly from Caswell plating. And then of course we have some copper wire. This is gonna be for like hanging parts and stuff. And then the actual zinc plates itself. Then from there I got six two gallon buckets. So these right here are actually two gallon food grade buckets and there are six of them. And this is basically my table. This is my setup where it is. We are gonna be putting all this whole kit together at. I just did. If you watched the last video, the one before this one, we actually just did this last night. So I wanted a place that I could set this all up without losing my, my counter space, you know what I'm saying? So bang, bang, there it is, all hidden away. All right, so I'm gonna get all this stuff opened up, start setting it up, and see if we can figure out how to make all this stuff work. still working on setting all this up so it's a little bit more involved than what I was expecting well in order to get everything organized to where it looks nice this is where I'm at so far the single burner I I actually did this intentionally left this section of my workbench open so that I could set this up away from all the chemicals not that any of this stuff is flammable I just feel like on the safe side but there's also room and I've left enough slack on the cord also so whenever I'm using this I can set this out here whenever I'm not using it I can just set it in here and shut this there is not gonna be any room for that in here <laughs> I'm thinking I'm probably gonna make like a little shelf underneath here for like supplies also got the heater ran and these little like clips that hold the heater it comes with these and a suction cup uh, on the side of a fish tank you know what I'm saying because this is for a fish tank so what I did was I ended up taking the suction cup off of one of them and I just put a screw through it to hold it there and then I also ran the hoses for the bubbler drilled a couple of holes right there this this bubbler has uh, two outputs so I obviously need to use both of them I only really needed one so there's the bubbler mounted on the wall and I got the lines all ran nice and clean zip tied everything I am gonna come back and clip all the zip ties don't worry don't have an OCD attack I got a power strip mounted up over here to plug everything in and I'm running my cord over trying to have a nice clean wire management so stuff isn't just hanging in which yes all this stuff is gonna get all 
wrapped up nice and zip tied up here out of the way. Now what I'm currently working on is portion actually hang the bolts and stuff on. Most people end up making a piece like this out of uh, some copper tubing. I already flattened one side, but they make it to where it sits on the edge of the bucket. But I'm thinking with mine, I could probably just go ahead and make it to where it sits on these two by fours right here. Anyhow, I need to go and cut this and then I'm gonna flatten this edge down also. So with it flat, it won't be able to roll around. You guys have got to have heard me say having OCD, it's a blessing and a curse at the same time. So like you always want things to be perfect, um, but I mean, it's nice because tend to put a little bit more effort into things for something to be nice. But at the same time, something that really should only take you an hour or so ends up taking you all freaking day long. <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I came out this morning with the impression that I was gonna have this all set up and we were gonna be freaking zinc coat some nuts and bolts within an hour or two well it's dark that's just how it goes man <laughs> so we're gonna start filling these buckets up and get to testing this out here in a moment I just wanted to show you guys it really quick so got our burner over here with the pot now I want to make a shelf right here for putting the pot so I can put the pot down here so just pretend like there's a shelf down here pot goes down there the burner actually goes right here and that's the reason why I have the cord coming from inside and I didn't just put the cord through the back I have it coming from in here so that I can actually set it in here and the cord is tucked in mounted our power supply up here on the door so now whenever you shut this down the power supply takes up this area right here whenever you're not using this all these buckets need to have lids on them or else for one uh, things will evaporate for two, you don't want to leave muriatic acid just ventilating into the garage or the yellow chromate that's going to be in this bucket. So anytime this is not in use, none of this stuff can be inside of the zinc bath. So this right here is going to be the actual zinc bath. But I just want to demonstrate this really quick. Unplug our wire. Goes over here. Our copper bar goes over here. Heater pulls off. Set it back there. Pull our zinc out. It goes over here also. Take our clip off of our bubbler and that will go in there. And then bang, you just put lids on all your buckets. Pot, remember, will be on the shelf. Drop this down, boom, the whole thing is put up. <laughs> I freaking love that, dude. It came out really dope. I've already got plans in my head and ideas on how to improve this, but you know what? For what it is, man, I think it came out pretty sick the way it is right now. Anyhow, let's get this thing back up and operational and start filling these buckets up with some liquid. All right, for starters, these three buckets right here are just water. Now in this bucket, we're gonna fill up with water as well. That bucket is our actual zinc bath. That is going to be the bucket that is going to be doing the actual zinc plating. So we are gonna be using just a cheap distilled water for that. All right, now I put a little less than two gallons of distilled water into there. Now I'm gonna be adding just a regular white vinegar. It, it's all over the place as far as people's opinion on how much to put. So I, I am just gonna put probably around a cup. Bang, bang. And now into the same bucket, we're gonna put some Epsom salt. And again, I'm not measuring. I'm just gonna put some Epsom salt. <laughs> All 
All right, that's it. That's our zinc bath. Could go ahead and mix all this stuff up a little bit. So I guess the more and more that you use it, the better it works, you know what I'm saying? So this being a fresh pot right now isn't going to work very well. So what, what I need to do is just find a junk bolt, hang it in there, and we're gonna actually go through the same process that we would uh, just zinc plating something. But we're gonna leave it on there for a good period of time so that it will kind of prepare the solution. I, I don't know. <laughs> Anyhow, moving on. We still have one, two, three more buckets to fill up. This bucket gets muriatic acid. This you wanna be very careful with because you're not supposed to get this on your skin and such. Uh, really, I, I should go get gloves. I'm gonna go get gloves. Alrighty, we got our protection on. Alright, so like I said, this bucket gets the muriatic acid. That's the only thing that goes in this bucket. And that stuff stinks, and it's not good to inhale this, to breathe the fumes from it. So I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on that right now. Alright, now for our pot. You know what that gets? Super clean. <laughs> Alright, I am going to go ahead and kick the whole system on right now. Oh, there goes our bubbles. I want the zinc bath to start getting warm. That's what this is for. The fish tank warmer is going to warm up our zinc bath. And then I also want to start warming up our degreaser. I'm just going to set it on. No, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to set it on medium. In this last bucket, we are putting distilled water as well. All right, so this one, I am leaving our distilled water down kind of low. We don't need a lot of volume inside of this bucket. That bucket is actually getting our yellow chromate. So this is a four ounce bottle. Um, I ordered this directly from Caswell Plating. You can Google them if you'd like. So this four ounce bottle will make uh, four gallons. So this is actually a concentrate. So you only want to use uh, one fourth of it. So one ounce in a gallon of water. So that's the reason why I only used a gallon of our water inside of this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and crack this open and try to pour just about a fourth of it in there. So I'm gonna cut this thing open, but when doing so, I am wearing my gloves and I am gonna go ahead and put my respirator on because they say that this is really toxic shit. <laughs> Here we go, I got three bolts. These are basically just like bolts for the fenders, you know, from the blazer. And they are, uh, they're really dirty, they're rusty, um, and they just, they, they're old, you know what I'm saying? So first step is we need to get these things really clean. And the shinier that you get a bolt, the better the zinc coating is gonna look. Now, whenever I was building khaki, I actually went through and I took all of my old bolts and I hit them with the wire wheel, which made them really shiny, made them look a lot better than this, you know what I'm saying? But the problem is, in which I didn't know back then, is you are removing all of the factory zinc coating that's on here, the only thing protecting it from rusting. So um, I noticed that really quickly with khaki is like, after a couple of months, all those bolts that I took the wire wheel to and shined them all up, they were just completely freaking rusted out, bro. I had to go back through and what I did was I wire wheeled them again and then I clear coated them all, which doesn't last very long either. So, so my first step here is I am gonna take these to the wire wheel just to get all this old dirt and grease and everything off as much as I can. There they are now after hitting them with the wire wheel. I mean, don't get me wrong, that's quite a bit of an improvement, but now they most certainly will rust. And honestly, the wire wheel is kind of like, eh. If I'm gonna get really serious about this, like I need to get a tumbler. They have them at Harbor Freight. I just, I need to grab one. A tumbler will get everything, all the rust, all the old grease and everything. It'll just completely clean these things really well. A tumbler and I need to get another one of these bench grinders, but the one that has the polishing wheel on it. Our next step is I have this copper wire here we have to hang each one of them off of a piece of copper wire all right now we've got all of our bolts where we're able to hang them we're sticking these into our boiling super clean the super clean is to degrease them so our goal here is to get all of the grease off of these because you don't want grease on them put the lid back on and we're gonna leave those in there for five minutes Right, our five minutes is up. Now the next step is we pull it out of the degreaser and we need to rinse all of the degreaser off. 
This right here is a rinse bucket. Like I mentioned earlier, this is only water. This bucket right here has our muriatic acid. Once we pull it out of the degreaser, we swish them around inside of the rinse bucket and then we dip it into the muriatic acid. They go into the muriatic acid for maybe like five seconds. You just kind of swish it around in there and you'll see it gets all like bubbly and stuff. And then from the muriatic acid, we're gonna bring it back over here and we're gonna hang it inside of our rinse bucket until we get done with all three bolts. Or if you're working on a larger amount, like if we're doing 10 bolts right now, you would just hang it on the side of the rinse bucket until you get all 10 of them rinsed from the degreaser, dip it in the muriatic acid, and then into the rinse bucket. For this step, I'm just gonna show you guys, I'm not gonna be talking you through it because I am actually gonna put my respirator on, my safety glasses, I'm gonna be wearing gloves because the muriatic acid is freaking stanky, bro. You most certainly don't want to breathe in the fumes from the muriatic acid. So here we go. Woo, good Lord. All right, so we have degreased them, which gets obviously all the grease off of them. And then we have done our muriatic acid dip, which just further cleans it and prepares the bolt for the zinc coating process. Our next step now is to go into the zinc bath. Now I have had just an old bolt in here for, I don't know, probably the last 40 minutes or so, just doing the zinking process because like I mentioned earlier, this is a brand new bath. Like this water is brand new and you really wanna get some of the zinc anodes, like anoids or whatever you call it, into the water. The more and more that you use the water, the better that your bath will actually work. And I was zinking that at five amps. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the power button here. It says off. Now that just means that there is no power running to this now. Now what I'm gonna do is take this bolt off. Definitely looks a lot different than what it was when it went in there. <laughs> Get out of here, buddy. So now I'm gonna go through and actually hang our bolts onto this piece of copper, and you want it to be just barely submerged in the water. I'm gonna go ahead and take the bubbler out for a second so you guys can actually see what's going on inside of here without all the madness. So now as you can see, the bolts are just barely submerged inside the water. You don't want them super deep down inside of there. Our zinc anodes are sticking into the water, okay? And now they're jumped together. I have a piece of copper wire right here that jumps from that anode over to this anode. And then the positive lead from our power supply goes to those. Now this piece of copper that the bolts are hanging on our bolts are actually hanging from a piece of copper wire and the copper wire is wrapped around this copper bar. Now I have a screw right here. That is what it is that we connect the ground to. So now whenever we kick this power on, the power has to go through the zinc, through the water, through the zinc bath to the bolts. And that is the process that actually makes the zinc coat the bolts. Now I'm not no scientist, bro. This, this, you know, this, this is just how they say you do it. <laughs> so here we go, man. I'm gonna try to, I'm, I'm hoping this comes out right. This actually looks pretty cool. I'm not gonna put the bubbles in yet. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this on five volts and I'm gonna hit start. And we are powering up. You can see the bubbles coming off of the bolts. So you see how they're sizzling in there? That means it's working. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put our bubbler back in there. They say you want this water to stay agitated. It helps the zinking process if you keep the water agitated. So that's why the bubbler is there. So now here comes the part that takes the absolute longest. We gotta leave those in there for 20 minutes. So I'm gonna set a timer on my phone for 20 minutes and I'll be back with you as soon as it's done. All right, it has now been 20 minutes. So our next step is we have to actually pull them out of the zinc bath and then, then they get dipped inside of the rinse bucket for the zinc. Do you guys see a pattern here? There's a rinse bucket for each step. You know what I'm saying? Pull it out of the zinc bath, rinse it, and then we have to dip it into the yellow chromate. Now the yellow chromate is what actually gives it that like yellow goldish color. Once again, I'm gonna 
respirator up and everything before opening that bucket up. So I'm not gonna be talking you guys through it, but here we go. All right, so this is what we ended up with. And <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. That, of course, is not the finish I'm going for. Hell, honestly, we're trying to protect these things from rust and make them look a lot nicer. And all actuality, that kind of looks like rust, right? So process isn't perfect. And I can't guarantee that I'm going to perfect my process in this video, but I will say, I'm gonna keep working at it until we get better results than that. So let's go ahead and try again. All right, so I went out and I grabbed three more bolts and what I did differently this time is I actually sandblasted these in my media cabinet out there. And this is what it is they look like after sandblasting. So watching and doing some more research on this, you guys see that built-in washer and like behind the head of the bolt how there's really no zinc coating or yellowing or anything going on whatsoever. I believe that to be because of our prep method with these three bolts was just with the wire wheel now the wire wheel does a good job but it can't reach down inside of like behind that damn head also did the back side of the washer this time and the threads i got the entire thing all sandblasted so what we're going to do different this time aside from just sandblasting them is i'm going to go ahead and do the muriatic acid first the muriatic acid will take off any of the old zinc plating so i want to actually hang the bolts in there and it'll start sizzling and you want to leave them until it stops sizzling whenever it stops that means it has gotten all of the old zinc plating off this is this is something i just learned in there watching videos after we're done with the muriatic acid i'll rinse them off really good and then we'll take the bolts over here to the wire wheel because the wire wheel is going to make them shiny so the last time with these ones after i pulled them out of the muriatic acid i put them directly into the zinc bath the muriatic acid dulls them out like a lot so i guess the shinier the bolt is the shinier you can get it whenever it goes into the bath, the more likely you are to end up with a shiny bolt whenever it's done. Another thing that has a lot to do with it is what you set your amps at on your power supply. Too much or too little amps can actually turn out in not coating the entire bolt or coating it, but it'll coat it like weird and makes it dull. Dude, to be straight up with you, there, there's a lot involved in this, man. And I'm trying to learn it at the same time, trying to explain to you guys what it is that I literally just now learned and at the same time everything that I'm watching like everybody has a different method bro they all do it differently so I'm gonna say once again I'm not extremely confident that I am gonna figure out my process in this video but like I said I guarantee you I'm gonna continue messing with it and trying different things until we get a good end result man because I want some shiny zinc plated bolts to put on my cars you know what I'm saying not not that I mean this already this looks like rust bro that's what we're trying to get rid of. All right, they've been in a degreaser for five minutes. Rinse them off really quick. Now into the acid bath until they stop sizzling. So I think they're good. Into the rinse again. Now this is what they look like. They have a really dull, like nasty look to them. So before we go and put them into the zinc bath, um, I'm gonna actually hit them with the wire wheel now and try to shine them up. And there's the result after taking the wire wheel to them, which believe me, I wish that we could just leave it like that, bro. Those actually look pretty damn good. So this is what it is that I used to do to my bolts before I learned of the whole zinc coating thing. Like you can get them to look like that. They look great. And then you put them on your car and it really doesn't take very long before they start rusting and going to hell looking a lot worse than what they even were before you freaking cleaned them up. You know what I'm saying? But I think we have our prep method down, bro. The one thing that I'm worried about is a lot of people that get the really shiny zinc coating to their bolts, they have something called a brightener additive that they put inside of their zinc bath. That is something that I just learned. Like you have to order that stuff from Caswell as well, the same place 
that I got my yellow chromate. And this brightener additive is what makes the zinc brighter and shinier. Another thing is I do need another heater because I'm supposed to have this yellow chromate at about 90 degrees in which it, that stuff is cold as hell, bro. It, it's cold out here right now. So those are two things that I think is really going to stop us from getting the finish that we really want. And I'm unfortunately not gonna be able to do anything about those today. I mean, I could run to Walmart and go grab a heater, but that brightener, I'm gonna have to order directly from Caswell and it will probably take a week or so to get delivered. But let's go ahead and try, see what we can do because I mean, we got the bolts as shiny as I can get them before plating. So let's see if that makes a difference. All right, I have them set up in the zinc bath and I have the amperage turned down to about 1.4 1.5 this time last time I had it set at 5 amps which is really high bro 5 amps would be for like a brake caliper <laughs> setting a timer for 20 minutes and hopefully we get better results this time I haven't showed you guys this but I put a wire up here I just put a couple screws into my light so there's a screw there a screw in the center and a screw on the far end and then I have this piece of bailing wire running across. So then I have a place that I can hang the bolts up while they're drying. I noticed rather quickly that um, I need to make a different place for sure because with them sitting there, it actually will drip on my head if I'm continuing to work right here. But anyhow, I'm gonna grab one of these down and show you. You're supposed to allow this to dry for 24 hours because you need to let the um, you need to let the zinc harden. It's gotta harden back up. Out here into the sun so we can see it a little bit better. Whoo, it is windy, bro. Anyhow, that is still not the look that I'm going for, man. <laughs> so, I don't know, I think it's a little bit better. Uh, a little bit better than the first try. Well, the look isn't any better, but I think it's a little bit more consistent this time. Like, that's not the look that we're going for, but the whole thing is all uniform. It's all one color, you know what I'm saying? Uh, where the first run that we did you see it's not all one color. There's like Different <laughs> Yeah, sand blasting I think is definitely the move because I think that air those areas right there where it didn't do anything to I think that's the old zinc coating that we didn't get off whenever we we're prepping it So now the second go around while it still is not the look that we're going for it is all uniform You know, what I mean it did get the whole entire thing so sandblasting is definitely the way. Anyhow guys, that's my setup, man. That's my, uh, that's my progress. This is my introductory into actually doing zinc coatings. I will most certainly keep you guys up to date. I am going to order some of that brightener to put into our zinc bath. And I really think that it's gonna be important for me to go and get another one of those heaters so that we can bring the temperature of this yellow chromate up to 90 degrees. It does tell you that it needs to be at 90 degrees and that right now is room temperature, which is cold. If I put my finger inside of any of these water buckets right here, this is like, it's really cold, you know what I'm saying? So I know that that yellow chromate is cold as well. And it says it is supposed to be at 90 degrees for it to work correctly. So <laughs> we have some improvements that we need to make and I'll most certainly keep you guys up to date as I make those improvements. It's the beginning stages, man. Anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I just, I wanted to show you guys the setup and bring you guys along with my progress, man. It's It can only get better, right? Anyhow, I'm gonna throw this video up for you guys really quick and I gotta get back to work on that blazer out there. Peace.